April 26, 1999. Millions of people around the world pressed the power button on their computers and nothing happened. No Windows logo, no beep, no startup sound, just silence. Their computers weren't frozen, they weren't broken, they were dead, permanently. Killed by a virus so destructive, it's the only one in history to successfully destroy computer hardware on a mass scale. This is the story of CIH, the Chernobyl virus. To understand how devastating this virus was, we need to go back to 1998. The internet was still young, most people were running Windows 95 or 98. Antivirus software existed, but it was clunky, expensive, and rarely updated. This was the golden age of pirated software and shareware. People downloaded games from sketchy websites, they installed crack programs from CDs passed around at school, and computer security wasn't really something regular users thought about. A Taiwanese college student named Chen Ing Hao sat in a computer lab, frustrated with his antivirus software. He wanted to prove a point about just how vulnerable Windows really was. So he wrote a virus, and he called it CIH. But CIH wasn't just any virus. It was a technical masterpiece of destruction packed into just one kilobyte of code. To put that into perspective, a single photo on your phone is thousands of times larger. CIH targeted Windows 95, 98, and ME, the consumer versions of Windows. It infected executable files, those .exe programs that you double-click to run. Now here's where it got clever. Most viruses increase the size of files they infect, which makes them easier to detect. But CIH used something called hole patching. It squeezed itself into unused gaps in the file structure, so infected files stayed exactly the same size. This made it nearly invisible. CIH didn't spread over the internet like modern viruses, it was simpler than that. When you ran an infected program, it would infect other programs on your hard drive. Then, when you shared that software with your friends, burned it to a CD, or uploaded it online, the virus went with it. Major software companies accidentally distributed CIH. Pirated versions of popular games like Sin and various Asian software packages came pre-infected. Millions of copies shipped worldwide with the virus already inside. CIH was programmed with a trigger date, April 26th. This was the anniversary of the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster, which is why the virus got its nickname. On this date, each year, the virus would wake up and execute its payload, and what it did was unprecedented. But before we move on, I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. You're a coder, you just might not know it yet. Brilliant transforms you into someone who actually understands what your code is doing and why. Now what I love about Brilliant's programming courses is that you're actively solving programs and writing real code, not just watching tutorials. Their CS and programming courses build a strong foundation with a focus on structuring logic, ensuring correctness and efficiency. Whether you're a student or a vibe coder with little to no experience, Brilliant gives you the knowledge to build confidently. You learn through hands-on problems and courses like thinking in Python and algorithmic thinking that guide you to those aha moments. You're not memorizing syntax, you're developing real problem-solving skills. To sign up for free, go to brilliant.org slash id10t error or scan the QR code that's on screen. Viewers also get an extra 20% off of annual premium subscription with unlimited access to everything. That's brilliant.org slash id10t error. Now back to the video. First, it attacked the BIOS. The BIOS is your computer's most fundamental firmware, the code that lives on a chip on your motherboard and tells the computer how to boot up before Windows even loads. Back in 1998, these chips were flashable, meaning they could be rewritten. CIH exploited this. It would overwrite the BIOS with random garbage data, completely erasing the instructions your motherboard needed to start. Your computer wouldn't even post. You'd press the power button and nothing. No beep. No display, just a dead machine. To fix this, you'd need to physically remove the BIOS chip and reflash it with special hardware equipment. And in 1998, almost nobody had access to that. 
and meant a trip to a repair shop or buying a new motherboard entirely. While it was killing your BIOS, it was also destroying your hard drive. It would overwrite the first megabyte of your hard drive, including the partition table and file system structures. This meant even if somehow you recovered the BIOS, your data was still gone. Photos, documents, homework, business files, all obliterated. There was no recovery, no undo button. Your computer was dead. When April 26, 1999 rolled around, the world woke up to chaos. South Korea was hit especially hard. Thousands of PCs in businesses, schools, and government offices simply died overnight. Turkey, China, and other countries saw massive infections. Repair shops were overwhelmed, tens of thousands of computers were declared unfixable. The financial damage was estimated between $500 million to $1 billion in 1998's money. Students lost final projects, businesses lost financial records, some companies had to shut down temporarily because their entire computer infrastructure was destroyed. And remember, this was before cloud storage, before automatic backups, so if your hard drive was wiped, that data was just gone. But here's the twist. He was never punished. Under Taiwanese law at the time, creating a virus wasn't illegal. Only using it maliciously was. Technically, Chen had only released it as a proof of concept. He claimed he never intended for it to spread so widely, but the damage was done. CIH had earned its place in history. Even today, cybersecurity experts look at CIH with a mix of horror and admiration. From a purely technical perspective, it was brilliant. At only one kilobyte, it was incredibly compact. Modern malware can be megabytes in size. CIH did more damage in less space than anything before or since. It used advanced tunneling techniques to intercept system calls and hide from antivirus programs. It was stealthy, efficient, and devastatingly effective. The hole patching technique alone was revolutionary, and by filling in unused space in executable file headers, CIH could infect programs without changing their size or obvious behavior. This made detection nearly impossible with 1998-era security tools. CIH changed computer security forever. After the Chernobyl virus, motherboard manufacturers added write protection to BIOS chips. Modern computers use UEFI firmware with secure boot and cryptographic verification. Hardware manufacturers implemented SPI flash protections. The idea that a virus could physically damage hardware was terrifying enough to trigger industry-wide reforms. Today, a CIH-style attack would be nearly impossible on modern systems. But back in 1998, CIH exposed just how fragile our data infrastructure really was. CIH remains the most destructive computer virus ever created in terms of hardware damage. No virus before or since has successfully bricked computers on such a massive scale. The Chernobyl virus taught the world a harsh lesson. Our computers are only as secure as we make them, and sometimes all it takes is one kilobyte of code to bring everything crashing down. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I don't really make content like this. So if you did enjoy it, make sure that you leave a like on the video and leave a comment down in the description what you thought about the video, as well as hitting subscribe while you're down there. It doesn't hurt, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.